Hey everybody out there, thanks for tuning in to my podcast. My name is Fernando, or people, everybody calls me Fernie, and I am your resident psychic medium and spiritual teacher, and uh, this is my place to basically be me and to share all that I know, all that I understand, but also just to kind of give you a little taste of my personality, so... Welcome. If you ha- if this is your first time joining in, I'm happy to have you guys listen in and hopefully walk away with something that you may not have come in with. So this podcast, um, today's podcast is about the other side, heaven, what's there, what happens, what it looks like. Um, and I had a, um, I had a, a person ask on um, one of my viewers on my Facebook lives, I had her ask, about this actually she posted this on instagram i believe and um i i think i've talked about this in the past before but you know with a podcast i can kind of take it a little longer and go into more detail because a lot of people don't really know what to expect when it comes to the other side or heaven or you know the hereafter what what other people call it so i'm going to tell you everything that i know everything that i have learned about this place and not only that but I'm going to share with you what I've personally experienced and what I what I feel and know heaven to be like okay so let's start with what most people think about heaven let's let's start with what most people believe heaven is or what it looks like or what it is now if you were raised catholic like I was then you know you think that heaven is this this place up in the sky in the clouds and whenever you pass away whenever you die you go up to heaven and you're basically you know wandering around in the clouds playing you know magical harps and you're doing that for all eternity in complete happiness you know that's what i learned heaven was and and all the movies and all the shows all the cartoons that i watched growing up made it seem like this is what heaven was like we just go up into the sky into the clouds and we kind of just hang out and watch our loved ones from heaven and just keep an eye on them so that's what i was um That's what I was taught. And I have come to understand that that is the most boring, dullest version of heaven that we have bought into. And um, I honestly, if, if heaven was just this, you know, fluffy cloud up in the sky and we as soon as we die we float up and we sit there and we just kind of play the harp and i i don't want to go there i don't want to be there i mean first of all i don't play the damn harp so that's that's already one thing that i'm not going to be able to do very well um and also i mean just how boring is that how boring is that to just be you know flying around a cloud and uh just looking at your loved ones here i mean come on i i i you have to believe that there's more to heaven than that right you've got to just common sense to tell you there's more to heaven than just flying around a cloud for all eternity so um doing all the readings that i've done over the years and then also through my own exploration my own studies reading different books different uh variations of what people believe heaven to be like um i've now I now believe that heaven is not so much a physical place as it is a state of being, but it can seem like a physical place depending on how you look at it, depending on your perspective. For me and from what I know, heaven is not so much like one place. Heaven to me is more like a high rise building. Okay. So when you when you pass away when you die you you come off you come in off the streets and you go into this this high rise building and you enter into the lobby the lobby is the first floor the place where you see the first place you see and the lobby is really pretty it's really shiny it's really magical everything looks really nice there so the first experience or the first awareness of heaven is this lobby you walk into this building you're like oh my gosh you know, this this place is gorgeous, but all you're looking at is the lobby. And so when most people disconnect from their bodies, what they will begin to experience, what, what they will see, what they will know is what they can understand. Um, and I've been I've I've seen this over and over and over again where what we encounter, what we experience when we first begin to transition over to that state is something that we're comfortable with, something that we're we're familiar with while we go through our reorientation process. And reorientation is a period of 
I wouldn't say period of time because there really isn't any time. Time doesn't exist. But um, reorientation is our personality, the person that we are in life, re, um, reconnecting, reforming, re, um, almost re, reabsorbing into the larger self, into the bigger self, into the bigger you, you know? You're, first of all, you, you're not a you're not a soul. You're a spirit within a soul within God. <laughs> so let me repeat that. You're not. You know. You're. People think that a spirit and a soul is the same thing, and they are not. A, a spirit is a personality. Is an essence. For example, I'm Fernie. My personality, the spirit being that I am here, is Fernando. It's Fernie. All that I've experienced, all that I am, and all that I know. It's Fernando. It's Fernie. But my soul is the larger part of me. It's the grander me. It's the part of me that is operating in multiple universes and multiple places and multiple forms all at once. It's the grander me. It's my larger self. And so when I die, my spirit is going to begin to experience heaven and that transition, that going over to the other side in the easiest way possible, in the way that I can understand and that I can relate to. Um, and so that change, that shift in energy, that you know, change in vibration, you're, you're kind of going from one point of being one point of awareness to another point of awareness it happens so quickly that it almost feels like you're going through a tunnel because, you know, that shift in, in energy is, is just a quick wasp. It's a quick, like from here, whoosh, there. And so that part is the tunnel effect. It's what we, what a lot of people describe. It's like, I feel like I'm going through a tunnel. You're not going through a tunnel. You're, you're not, it's not a physical tunnel. You're actually going through a vibration. You're going from one point of awareness to another point of awareness, and it's happening so quickly that it feels like you're going through a tunnel. So your spiritual essence, your spiritual personality, you begin to transition, begin to make that change over from the physical world to the spiritual plane or to the spiritual world, which um the which is level one spiritual world is level one so you 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 go over into that space you go over into that vibration you go over into that state of awareness that state of being the 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 first level which is the um, ground floor or the lobby of the, the high-rise building and so what you're going to see there what you're going to experience there what has been prepared for you is whatever makes you comfortable whatever makes it easy for you to accept and to embrace that this is your new reality this is where you are now this is what you are now so a lot of people describe a lot of personal experience when they when they describe their experiences they're very personal some people describe being you know in their mother's home and it was the place where they were the most happiest some people describe being in a place that is like uh their lake house where they used to go fishing and they used to have the best memories there um, some cultures describe it as crossing a bridge some some cultures describe it in different ways so everybody's heaven is very unique and and specific to them whatever makes them comfortable whatever the happiest the most content the most highest uh, experience that they had in their life that is what their heaven initially will look like so your personality fernie you know my happiest moment in life gosh if i can just think back to that um i think my happiest moment in life was me meditating um me meditating on the third floor of this uh, meditation room or space that I was visiting here in New Mexico. I think it was one of my happiest places in the world. So I think, you know, my heaven might so happen to look like this place. So when I die and I, I cross over to that to that vibration to and I shift over energy, um, that's what I'm going to begin to experience is whatever makes me comfortable, whatever I can relate to. And then once you get to that point, then you become, you begin to reorientate, you begin to reacclimate to being in that vibration and being in that place. So you're like, okay, I'm in the lobby now. I'm here. I'm comfortable. It's nice. It's beautiful. You know, now what? So now, you know, you start to ascend, you start to go to a higher vibration. You start to become aware of things from a very different perspective. So it's like you're getting on an elevator and the elevator starts to take you up. So in heaven, once you get to that place that you're familiar with, then you start to ascend to different levels, to different different 
places, uh, to different vibrations that represent the higher you. So what happens is you get in the elevator and you go to the next floor, which is, you know, level two, which is the second floor. Once you get to the second floor, you know, you're, you basically realize that your clothes don't represent you. The, the issues, the, the problems, the, the, your clothes represent your problems, your baggage, you know, the backpack you have with you, all that you endured in life, all the things that you worried about, all the things that you were concerned with, all the things that preoccupied your mind and your thinking, all of that stuff, that's the clothing you wear. That's the, 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 the backpack on your back that you walked in with to this lobby. So you got into the elevator, you get into the, the, the second floor and you're like, I don't need to carry this backpack anymore. I don't need to worry about those issues anymore. I don't need to worry about those worries and concerns. I don't need to worry about this person or that person. So you get to the second floor and you take off your backpack and you take off your clothes and now you're you're pure, you're nude, you're you. You're the purest essence of yourself. So I'm the purest essence of Fernie, right? Don't not not having the same issues, not having the same worries. I'm not worried about that bill. I'm not worried about that, you know, funny rash or whatever. I'm not worried about any of those things. Then you go to the, you go to the third floor. And the third floor, you realize that even though you've taken off your clothes, you've taken off all your backpack, all the stuff you were wearing, you still you still don't feel authentically you because you still look like yourself. You're still Fernie. You're you're still that personality. And what you're told and what what we're made aware of is that that personality isn't really us either. It's just an uh, it's just a mask that we're wearing. It's just the personality. It's the role. It's the part that we chose to play. When we came down into the physical world, when we came into 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 existence here on this plane, on this physical plane, so we are told that this personality that I think I am is not actually me. It's just the part I was given to play. So on that third floor, I on my, I immediately begin to realize that I am not Fernie. I mean, I I am Fernie, but I'm not only Fernie. I mean, I represented Fernie. I was Fernie, but I'm not purely just that. I'm more than that. And so I begin to peel off that layer of myself. That's the personality layer. I begin to peel off that personality. The person that I became, the person that I am, that is the layer that I'm peeling off. I begin to take that off and take that mask off because it no longer serves me. It served me while I was in life. I mean, all of the things I experienced, all of the perspectives I have, all of the opinions that I am, you know, that's all Fernie works in the human world because it's meant to work and operate in the human world, but it has no real purpose in the spiritual plane. So that personality, that which I have gotten used to being in life, no longer serves me there. So I take off that mask. I take off that skin. I take off that personality and it is no longer all, all of, it is no longer a representation of who I am at my core. It is only a part that I played. So on that third floor, I take the costume off, the ferny costume off. And then I'm this pure energy. I'm this pure light being that is simply self-aware and is aware not only of Fernie, but then I go up to the fourth floor where I've taken off the mask of Fernie. I've taken off that personality. And now I'm this pure white light being. And, um, and I'm this, just this pure essence. And then I get to that fourth floor and I'm made aware that not only am I Fernie, but I also was all of these other people, all of these other personalities. And I'm shown it's this, this, this stage where I'm made aware of all that I have been and all of my lifetimes. And so I, I, so I'm this pure light being and I'm made aware of all these personalities I played and all that I learned, all that I knew, all that I received through those experiences, I now have again. So not only do I have all the information, all the knowledge that I gained from my lifetime as Fernie, but I also have all the knowledge and information that I gained from my lifetime as this person and as that person and as this person and as that person through all the different stages and ages of the earth. And so I played all these parts through all these different 
points in history and now all of these are available to me for me to understand and to grasp fully so at that moment i am in my full awareness understanding myself as this pure light being with all this knowledge and all this wisdom it doesn't end there because then i go to the next level to the next floor the fifth floor and when i get to the fifth floor I realize that my understanding of me being separate from all the other versions of me, there's other souls, that's the soul level. So here I am, I'm one soul. And from what I and if you've ever heard any of my channelings, I actually I actually channel a being called Aja, and Aja I believe is the name of my soul, the the, the name of my higher self, the self, the me that is the the culmination and the 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 connectedness and the the culmination of all the information all the knowledge all the lifetimes that i've lived so that i i've I, that name that i have for that being is aja the higher me my soul the one with all of the lifetimes of experience and the wisdom etc and so aja you know goes up to the the fourth floor or the fifth floor fifth floor and you're on this plane now you're on this level you're on this vibration where Aja is just one aspect, one drop in the ocean. And there are all the other drops that we are we are not only aware of, but we also realize we are. We in we in togetherness, we in connect uniformity. We all are the same thing, the same substance. So all the other beings, all the other light beings that are there, we all realize that there's no separation between light from one than light from the other. There's no separation other than just simply being self-aware that there is separation, being aware that we are all disconnected from each other by choice, not by force. And so in that space and in that point, at that, at that moment, we realize that we are all the same that we are all one but we all give have we have all put ourselves in positions where we are separate we've all you know given ourselves that idea that that lie that we are separate that we are different and not connected to each other and so in that floor on that floor on that vibration we are all connected on a higher uh, in a higher way, we all the drops of the ocean come together and form that ocean. And that awareness, that that process of reconnecting, of being aware that we are all the same, takes us to the next level, to the next floor, which is level six. And that level is the level of God. It's actually the penthouse. It's the height. It's, it's the top of the building. So we become aware that, and, and that's where we become one. We are unified. We are one. We see things as one. We understand things as one. And so that's the God level. That's the penthouse. That's the, 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 the level where you see everything around you. You see all things. You understand all things because you've received and you've lived through all things. You've been everyone and every thing and so that's the heights that's the top that's the ceiling that's the godhead that is the level of god so when i tell people that i believe that we are all gods in the making i truly and, and, and really believe that because we all see things you know god is the heights it's the top of the roof there it's the the penthouse everything is seen everything is understood everything is 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 experienced and and, and together and then when you start to go down in levels and vibrations, there's a separation that takes place, except there's really no separation. These are just these are just points of awareness, points of vibration, points of energy. Um, these are just these these phases that we, we we go through as being, you know, different points and different parts of the, 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 the God. We experience things as individuals, but we're all part of the divine. We all make up the conglomerate. We are the big, bigger picture. So that is why I say God is omnipotent. God is perfect. God is all things, all people, all places, all experiences, all things. And so all perspectives, that includes the positive and the negative, the good and the bad, all of it is all part of the larger picture, the larger being, the larger thing. And so it's all composed of love. It's all made of love. It's all pureness in, in, in love. The only, the only thing that creates a sense of hatred or separation or disconnection isn't that 
you know, God has a mortal enemy and the enemy is the devil or God has, you know, God has the opposite. It's not that it's that it's just that when we go through the lower levels, when we start to descend to the lower vibrations, when we come into the physical world, we go through these periods and phases and stages where we give ourselves the idea that we are separate, where we give ourselves the lie that we are by ourselves, that we are alone and that we are not you know, everything else. And so that's the only difference. And it's there for a reason. It's there on purpose. It's, it's, it's intentionally there. And I, I was telling people tonight in our Facebook live, um, people who are asking me questions on my Facebook live, uh, that nothing, you know, someone asked, does my gift come from God? Do I think it comes from God? And I said, well, of course it comes from God. I'm like, I, nothing happens without God's permission and God's, in God's universe and everything is part of God. So nothing happens without God's permission, period. The good and the bad. So there's a reason why things happen, the good and the bad. And even though in the moment that you're going through something difficult, you may not understand that there is a deeper, more profound th- process experience that is occurring there and if you only see things from a superficial human pain you know place then you're gonna miss the bigger picture you're gonna you're not gonna understand what's the point and there's always a point and so nothing happens without god's permission is what i believe so what this is my understanding of what heaven is heaven is not just a place and it starts off that way you know it starts off that way for us that need to feel that physicality that sense of this is a a beautiful place it's a physical place but then once we start to ascend and become higher vibrations once we ascend to the higher levels once we realize what we really are beyond our personality beyond our problems in life then we are one with god and then then it is heaven. It is the place of pureness of love and of divinity. So when I connect with those in spirit, because, you know, during sessions, I bring through a lot of information sometimes for people here, and I give them a lot of validating information. And their, their loved ones, whenever their loved ones come and connect with me, I am not connecting with those beings who are on those higher vibrational levels who are who are ascended to the highest levels i don't have access to those beings or that my access to them is limited because i'm very very lower level right now because i'm a human being we're all lower level right now it's it's you know the 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 curse of life is actually the gift of life being human being self-aware knowing what we are is the gift of life and we're meant to be here in this state for very, very unique and specific reasons. And so when I connect with those in spirit, I'm connecting to those who are on level one and level two and possibly on level three. But most of the time I'm sticking to that level two stage because that's where the personality still is intact. But at the same time, the the spiritual essence, the personality is self-aware of things and no longer carries some of that baggage and can understand things from a more deeper and more profound um, um, place. But they have haven't ascended to the higher level so when i'm connecting with those in spirit if your loved one is is someone who's ascended and gone up to a higher level they will begin to come back down the elevator they're going to put that mask back on they're going to put it on their skin they're going to put on that personality those traits those qualities and when they present themselves to me they're going to come across as that personality so that not only you but i can also recognize them as a human being with human issues who had human struggles so when they show up to me for me they show up on that vibration in that form um they don't show up as you know hi you know i'm you know you know uh i'm jari and i was your uncle phil and all of love all of life to you like you're not going to recognize someone if they show up like that what are you going to recognize about them how are you going to know them so for me when i do the work that i do i specifically am expecting to connect with those personality essences those personalities those individuals on that level um, who are presenting themselves from that place that state of awareness you know and once i'm done with them they will re they will reascend to higher vibration but they, they they're kind of like fish out of water you know once you start to ascend to higher levels you kind of stay at that place unless you intentionally want to come back and live a physical life then you then you descend and come back down put on personality put on some sort of you know life circumstance that's going to help you to become a, a new individual but um 
but they're like a fish out of water. So when they come down to me, they can only hold that lower vibration, that lower stage for so long before they start to reascend to a higher stage, a higher awareness. So I can only hold on to them for so long. And just why usually when I'm connecting with a spirit, I can only hold on to them for like maybe 10, 15, 20 minutes at the most. Even though I have sessions that are like 40, 45 minutes, um, usually a spirit won't try to hold on for that long because that's a long time. Usually other spirits will come in and communicate and say hello because they're like they really are like fish out of water and not only that but it takes me a lot of energy to be able to hold on to them on that lower on that lower level because it requires me to ascend to a higher level from the human state so there's this this bridge that has to form between us um that's that's essentially what happens so heaven isn't just a physical place heaven is actually a state of being but there are there are several states of being and several layers, several levels of awareness that compose heaven. And so what we hear about these physical places where people love and, oh, this is the lake house that I grew up at, or, oh, this is the fields that I used to, you know, go in and, and play with my friends and that's my heaven. Everyone's heaven is different. And so they, they, they you know, everyone's going to experience different things when they get there. But once they start to ascend, I mean, they're not even, you know, sticking to that physical level or to that, that space that what we would think of as a physical place because it's way more than that but when they show up for me when they come through for me they come through from a perspective of those lower levels to help me understand and recognize them so that you can recognize them you can know what well, yep that was my mom she was just like that that was her personality so you can understand and recognize them so this is that that's what heaven is it's 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 a state of of being but there's several different and so uh, several different states and so one of my the 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 um you were asked about heaven and like where was it and what's it like it is such a complicated answer because it's not just a place it's not even a place um the place is the illusion it's it's more than that um and when people ask me you know what are my loved ones doing there well they're they're ascended they're 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 with they're connected to god they're understanding and experiencing all that is and all that will be and all that has been so all past present and future all exist simultaneously which is another complete conversation altogether that we'll have one day um but they are, are they are with god um but they they still work you know they're still you know people don't realize that you're it's not like you're just at that one level, you can actually encompass and be all the levels at all times. So the, all, all the aspects of you are all operating and functioning at all the different levels simultaneously. And I know that's like a main, that's like a brain boggler, but it is. I mean, I can be right now I am functioning and, and on the physical human level, but I'm also existing and, and, and experiencing and functioning on that high vibrational Godhead level as well. So I exist on every single level simultaneously and what I'm aware of and what I'm experiencing seen personally is what I'm allowing myself to experience. So that's why sometimes when people meditate or they pray, they feel a sense of presence and a sense of peace and something come over them. Well, it's not because they're being visited by something supernatural. It's because they're allowing themselves to connect with the higher parts of themselves and realizing that which is God, that which is the all. And they're, they're really feeling that. So that's that's heaven that's what the other side is like and and so um you know we 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 go through that experience we go through that through through those awarenesses and we're, we're constantly operating on those different levels and that's life and so right now i'm fernie i am here giving you this story helping you to understand things from this perspective and you know at some point you know i may understand it much more deeply or i see it much more deeply than this perspective because uh, of course i don't know everything from this perspective from this mindset i'm limiting myself physically energetically to be in the state of mind that fernie is um, once I ascend and go higher, or once I connect myself to my higher self, which is Asha, which are the channelings of Asha, which you, I share with you on my website, and then that's a different story. So really interesting stuff. It's take, It took me a long time to figure all that out and to understand all of that, because I always thought that heaven was a place. Like you die, and then you go through the tunnel, and you're there. You're in heaven. You're at the pearly gates, and everything's made of gold, and it's just not like that. I mean, if that's what your heaven would look like, then yeah, I mean, I could totally say that 
then that's heaven, but it's way more than that. And there have been times in my dreams where I've actually visited those higher levels, those higher states. Um, there was one time where one of my uncles who passed away, who um, helped to raise my sister when she was younger, um, you know, my sister always always wondered if he knew how she was doing or if he was keeping up with her and if she, if he knew that she had graduated high school and college and become a very successful person in IT and all of that other stuff. So um, she had always wondered that. And in one night I had a dream and in the dream I went to this huge house and this house, and, and for me, it's always the same. The house is white. <laughs> Whenever the house is white, I know that I'm having, uh, I'm having, I'm, I'm visiting with my loved ones who are on those higher vibrations, who are in quote unquote heaven. And so, um, in this dream, I was in my uncle's house. He was there, and it was a gorgeous house. I mean, absolutely beautiful house. Huge. Everything was white and pristine and clean. And, um, and he started to walk, give me the tour. He was giving me the grand tour of his home. And when he walked me through the different areas, all of the, all of the things on the shelves, all of the things on the walls were my sister's awards from school, all of her awards growing up and what she received, her different awards for this and that her diploma was on the wall, all these different things that represented her and what she had accomplished. Um, and so I walk, I, he gave me the tour and he was just so proud of all these different things that she had achieved and accomplished. And then I woke up. So I knew from that dream that I had ascended and gone, gone to that heavenly state and he, his energy, who he was, what he was on a, on a spiritual essence level, on a personality level was trying to let me know that, you know, he was aware of her and her accomplishments and that he was very proud of her. And I remember telling her that over dinner one, one evening, um, I said, I had this dream and I want you to know that the old came to see me and he showed me all of your awards and his, and his home and his home in heaven. And that he was very proud of you. And she just broke down crying and just, she was so, um, touched because she's, she'd always wondered if he knew about her and what she'd accomplished. So, um, that was one one dream that I had. There was another dream right before my uncle, um, my uncle Joaquin passed away. He was a, a doctor that lived in San Antonio. We, we all lived in Houston. And so we used to travel out to see him, you know, quite regularly during the summer when I was growing up. And then as time went on and we got older, you know, we saw less and less of him. But he was one of those uncles that I was always very proud of. And I was very proud of who, not only of what he had accomplished, but also of who he was, because he was such a good person. He would, he always worked First of all, the, the clientele base, you know, you can become a doctor and you can work with people and you can, you know, you can make a lot of money as a physician if you know what you're doing. Um, but he always chose to work with those less, less, uh, those who were less advantaged, those who, who were poor, who couldn't afford all of the medical help and et cetera. So whenever I would go to his clinic, they were, it was just filled with all of these poor people and their children. I mean, they're always, always, always my uncle himself, he lived a very, very good life and he was very comfortable. Um, and he always was, he, he didn't need for anything. I mean, he was from our standards, he was rich. Um, but you know, when you went to his work, you know, he was there helping all of these people who couldn't afford, um, um, healthcare or who, you know, were, were off of Medicaid or, you know, Medic and so he was, it's the insurances that didn't always cover everything. And so what he, you know, he, he could have easily have had maybe 20 people in one day, 20 appointments or whatnot, and, you know, had higher insurances and that would have covered, you know, instead he was seeing 20, 30, 40 people a day. And so he was actually making it up in numbers versus in, 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 in the, the, in the, in less patients is what I'm saying. So I just always looked up to him and I always appreciated him as a person because he was just such a great person, great guy. And, um, before he died, I didn't get a chance to visit him and I wanted to, but his, his daughter was keeping the rest of the family away because she wanted to kind of cash in on all of his, all of his stuff. And so she thought that if the family came around him, then, you know, he might try to make changes to his will or whatever. And she was trying to keep him very isolated from the rest of the family. Um, drama, right? Family drama. So I didn't get a chance to see him. 
But a week before he passed, before I knew that he passed, because we, we were told a few days before he passed that he had passed away. This was about a week before that. And I had a dream. And in the dream, I um, and we knew he, he had been sick. We knew he had been sick for quite some time. For several months, he was actually pretty sick. And we knew that he was probably going to get closer to it sooner or later. But I had a dream. And in the dream, a week before he passed, um, I was at his house. And this wasn't the house that I knew when he... Um, when, when we used to go visit him every single year, this wasn't that house. And this wasn't the ranch house that he lived at towards the end of his life. This was um, a house that was just this huge modern house that was just uh, gorgeous, all white, of course. I mean, it was all a modern white house, a big old house. And there was a huge celebration going on, a big party. And my uncle was always known for having these massive parties and these huge themed parties. And, um, we uh, we went uh, I went to his house and I was there, and I saw him and I said, "Oh my God, I'm you know I'm so happy to see you. I I've been wanting to come and see you, but you know your you know his daughter you know she wasn't letting us come to to, to to say hello, and I'm just so happy to see him." And he said, "Oh, he's fine now. He's doing better, um, and he's just excited and happy to be with his brothers and sisters. Now all of his brothers and sisters had passed away, so he was the only one left." Um, and so I, I gave him a huge hug and I was just so happy and mariachis were playing and, you know, it was just a big old party, but it was just a big white house. And so, um, sure enough, the few days later, um, they let us know that he went into a coma and passed away. Um, so that's what happened with him. So every time I have this dream about being in a white house, I know that I'm on a higher vibration. I'm probably in heaven and I'm visiting someone on that higher level. Now there have been other dreams that I've had. Um, like one, one of, one of the dreams that I had was of my friend Chelsea and Chelsea. Um, if you don't know Chelsea's story and I'll have to do, I'll have to, I'll have to do a um, podcast on her because she had a really huge impact on my life. But I had a, a friend named Chelsea who passed away several, several years ago. She was a, um, she was a victim of a hit and run and, um, she was in a coma after that and, and just, and then of course, you know, she, she passed away, but after she passed away a few days after I had this dream and in the dream, I was in this massive, huge auditorium and the auditorium, what it reminded me of the auditoriums that you go see, like people who are doing conferences and speakers and, or people are performing on stage. So I was in this auditorium with a bunch of other people that I didn't know. And it was it was a gorgeous auditorium, and I was there, and Chelsea was on the stage. And it wasn't the Chelsea that I remembered here in life. I mean, Chelsea here in life, she was, you know, she was a young girl, um, very vibrant personality, um, very uh, – nothing she never took it didn't seem like she took anything too seriously she always really enjoyed herself enjoyed life and she just lived you know lived her life the way she wanted to um but she was still a kid you know she was still a young adult she was a kid but in this dream she was an adult i mean she was this person who was giving lectures and talking to people about her experiences being in life and being a human being and she was giving a lecture and helping us to understand her her experiences on this level um and it was a fascinating dream because i saw her very differently in that dream than when i knew her in life but i knew once I, when i woke up i knew that that was her and that she was teaching those other spiritual beings she was sharing her knowledge and awareness and what she experienced from her perspective as Chelsea here in the physical world, she was sharing that with all of the other souls there, my, myself included, because I was a guest. Um, but it was a fascinating dream, and I remember being there as well. And there there are other dreams that I've had where I went and, and visited heaven, and I was in these places that were just really um, interesting to see. I think there was one where it was a this it was the the ocean i was at an ocean town and it reminded me of some of these towns where you find in europe or in italy where they're right off the ocean and it's beautiful blue waters and um so i I remember having dreams of being at places like this and i knew that it wasn't here in the physical world i knew that this was heaven um but that's what my personality that's what me fernie that's all that i could comprehend and understand about being on that higher vibration being in that state um, and that's all that I could understand from from me, from where I am right now, currently on the physical plane. So that those are my glimpses into the other side. 
But yeah, I, I, I love those dreams because they help me understand and feel more at home than I've ever felt here in the physical world on, on, on planet Earth. And whenever I've been there, there's just there really is a sense of being home. Like this is where we all come from. This is where we all go back to. Um, and I have no doubt in my mind that when every person here passes away, they go there. And a lot of people say, well, what about the people who are horrible, people who are rotten, who are molesters and murderers and killers? You have to remember from a higher spiritual awareness, from an understanding, from the God awareness, nothing happens without God's permission. And so all of those parts that were played were played by souls who volunteered for those parts those were parts they were not they are not real um they are not real beings they are parts that are played by real beings if that makes any sense so you know even and and people are going to hate me for saying this but you know some of the worst people in the world some of the most horrendous acts that were done you know all of it was part of this play part of this experience that we all have signed up for as spiritual beings having human experiences and understanding you know these these different points of perspective so all beings go to heaven. All beings are part of God. And we are all part of the grander picture. Now, if you choose to believe and you want to believe that the people that wronged you or that those that you hate go to hell, then be, be believe that. Understand that. It doesn't really matter because once you once you drop the baggage, once you drop that backpack you've been carrying with you, all of your pain and your 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 sorrow and your your all of the worries and all of the human conditions that you have endured in this life once that drops away and you go to you know level level three or level four and you ascend to those higher vibrations you completely understand that this is all just a really good you know telenovela this is just a novella on tv all of the parts all of the different situations the movies it's just a really good movie and and everybody's an actor in this movie so all right guys i hope my explanation and understanding of what heaven and what those higher vibrations and what happens when we die i hope all of that has made sense for you and i hope i have helped to shed some light on some of those things thank you so much for tuning in if you want to follow me on facebook live or on facebook because i have a professional facebook page please follow me there i do free readings once a week i try to do them once a week for those of you who can't afford a session with me um if you do want a session with me and you want to have a one-on-one i will be happy to try to help you um and you can do that by just going to my website www.fernandamarone.com I do offer a free course. It's a class that teaches you how to develop your own psychic and intuitive abilities. And you can find that on my YouTube channel. Just go to my website and you can get to my YouTube channel from there. Or just go to YouTube and type in my name and I'm going to come up. Um, And the class is free. and You'll learn everything you want to learn there. Uh, Don't forget to like my podcast if you enjoyed this um, episode. And also, please follow me on Instagram, on Snapchat, and on Twitter as well because I'm on everything and I try to to post as often as possible on all the platforms so thank you so much for uh, tuning in I love you all and I hope you have an amazing day until next time